Right guys, so currently it is what, five past five in the morning. Um, this is a weirder type of vlog, um, slash, I think labelled it's a documentary, um, in our notes. Sorry, I'm not very energetic, I'm very tired, um, but today I'm travelling over to Oxford um, for a uni visit, but I've got to get this vlog done. So, I'm going to have a chat to you about Dyer's star theory analysis um, on the way to Oxford, because I've got a two and a half hour journey, um, so I might as well make the use of that by chucking you guys on my dashboard and talking to you guys about that. So, yeah, I will see you guys in a second. And we're in Oxford. So, yeah, um, I was going to be vlogging on the way here, but ended up basically not being able to because I had to concentrate on driving, which was probably the best best idea. But yeah, so Clyde, nah. Um, right, Dyer's star theory suggests that there's four four sections to, or four types of artist. Uh, the first one being uh, that they are a character um, and my example for this mainly is the gorillas um, they're quite obviously a character because on stage and in all their music videos they appear as cartoons whereas obviously in real life they're not they're, it consists of two members um, one of which is the the main guy from Blur um, I've forgotten his name but yeah they founded, founded that band with um, one sec, there's people, get really dirty vlog, dirty looks vlogging, I also have no idea where we're going, we're like walking through a park, oh, I'm sure this is the right way, but yeah, um, so the gorillas is a prime example for this, um, because yeah, like I said, they're, they're animated, um, and Dyer suggested that, um, if a band is or an artist appears differently on stage than they are in real life then it is used by the production company I guess so yeah that's that bit um, yeah we'll do the next bit later I need to find somewhere kind of inside because it's raining so one sec okay so we're still lost um, in Oxford we're trying to find Maddie's lecture um, it's not working out great, but I'm going to say about, what's his face, Dyer's second point of his star theory, which is that uh, artists can be seen as a commodity, um, meaning that they are only there to make profit for the production company, um, and my um, example for this is One Direction, uh, they got formed on X Factor, uh, in, can you remember what the season was? No? Don't remember? Okay, so they, they all came in as different people and then um, failed to qualify um, for whatever it is, boot camp or the, yeah. Um, then Simon Cowell was like, let's chuck them all together and we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then I think they came like third and then Simon Cowell signed them anyway to Psycho Records and yeah, but nowadays I think their combined net worth is about 250 million, like giving about 50 million to each of them. Um, that made up most. I, I think Simon Cowell's net worth is only 300. Net worth is only 300 million, so it's making up the majority of his profits. Um, just coming from One Direction. Um, personally, don't think they're a fantastic band. That's why I'm saying that they're more of a commodity rather than being in it for the music, um, because. Well, talent shows ruin music. Um, kind of. You're laughing. Do you, want, do you want to have a comment on this? No, no comment? Come on, give me a comment on the X Factor. Do you like X Factor? Do you like the X Factor? 
Maddie, I'll stop, I'll stop recording when you say she likes the X Factor. No. Right? You watch it every year. No. She's an absolute mega fan. <laughs> um, so that's that bit of Dyer's analysis. We've gone the wrong way, it's this way. We went that way last time. Um, yeah, still lost, but we will <laughs> resume in a bit when I can either sit down when she's in a lecture and talk to you about the next button, the ideology part of it, or I will, in fact, no, I'm gonna wait, wait for her about the ideology because it'll be fun. Um, and I'll talk to you about Ed Sheeran. So I will be back in a sec, guys. Okay, so we've just finished the um, nursing talk for Maddie. Um, that was great fun for me. Um, Maddie seemed to enjoy it though, so you know that was that was all good. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we did end up finding where we were me meant to go. Uh, we're now heading heading back. Um, as we do that, I'm going to tell you about the third part of Dyer's analysis, which is that the artist will represent a culture or ideology. Um, there's loads of loads of different um, what's it called artists that uh, will represent something like Coldplay do a lot of stuff with uh, Oxfam and different charities. Um, one sec. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're still recording. Um, so yeah, sorry. Yeah, people walk past. Um, this is the first time I've actually vlogged in public, so I was just like in the comfort of my own room. But you get a lot of weird looks carrying a camera around. Um, but yeah, Dyer's analysis, uh, the culture and ideology part. Coldplay do. Oxfam, but the one I'm going to talk about is Beyonce because she's done loads of work with um, uh, LGBT and feminism um, and is seen as quite a popular figure in feminism, supposedly. Yeah. yeah? What's, what's, what are you saying about Beyonce? There's a, there's a bit of a borderline between feminism and sort of like comfort of the world. Um, I can't for the words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was really useful. <laughs> oh, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> objectification. Okay, so yeah, thin line between um, objectification and feminism. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, questionable whether she does represent feminism or that's just a sort of her what, public image yeah. that is that she's meant to be all female strong um, I'm, I'm guessing the objectification bit comes from the fact that she wears no clothes on stage yeah, yeah um, obviously she's known for not wearing much and her dancers don't wear much either so it seems to be quite a, a trope of hers that she doesn't wear much but then in real life like you see pictures and she's walking around in like, well, tracksuits and stuff. So there's a, a distinct split between who she is. So it kind of links with the idea of uh, the characters, like I spoke about with the gorillas, um, that they're different in, in real life to what they are on camera. So that's the third part done. And I'm gonna I put this camera down because there's still people walking around and this is really fun. Also, I'm walking up a hill and I'm out of breath. So, <coughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you in a bit, guys. <laughs> okay, and we're now back in the car from Oxford. Um, yeah, it was a good day out. Well, we didn't get to go to the city in the end because I'm knackered and I've got places to be, people to see. But the last part of diet analysis um, I'm going to talk about now, and I cannot remember what it's called because I think this one might be character now. Um, but basically it's that they're perceived um, in a work like, oh I'm a construction, that might be it. So basically they're constructed in a way on stage that they either are or aren't in real life. And the way that he explained it was that the artist has got to be ordinary and like sort of relatable but also extraordinary. Um, and so people usually use Adele for this because she's like 
normal like per person, but she's got a really good voice. Um, but the one that I'm going to say is Ed Sheeran, being that he's quite relatable in terms of his songs and his lyrics that he puts to them, talking about you know Doritos and his latest songs. Um, and like, although it's a metaphor, he talks about Lego and Lego House. Um, but yeah, he's quite relatable in terms of how he sings and what he sings about. But at the same time, he's still a star because of how well he can play guitar, how well he sort of just does it all by himself, like using his loop pedals and whatever, although that's debatable according to the internet at Glastonbury. Um, was it Glastonbury? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Okay. Um, so yeah, that's uh, four parts of Dies Analysis. I've now got a two and a half hour journey home. Um, and I'll probably round up this vlog, this vlog then. So I'll see you guys when I get there. Okay, so I was just editing the vlog and realised that I never actually rounded it up. Um, well, we did, but can't use that footage for <laughs> undisclosed reasons. It might come up on the channel at some point. But yeah, that's my vlog on Dyer's analysis done. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that and found it somewhat informative. And I'll see you guys in the next vlog or documentary that I do. Oh, this is just editing his, so check out his channel for his more in-depth interviews about data analysis featuring some other people in our year. So, bye guys.